That's just a sink. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> man knows the industry, eh? Hey? How good. So, we good to go? Yeah, we're good. Easy. Well, welcome back, Warriors fans, to a special episode of One Take, the official podcast of the One New Zealand Warriors. No Jacko today, so it's just me, Surly, in the hot seat, steering the ship for this week's episode. But today's guest, he probably needs no intro, but I'll give him one anyway. He's in hot form at the moment. The Prince of Penrose, Sean Johnson. Welcome <laughs> along, bro. Cheers for joining us. Thanks, brother. Thank you for having me. Unreal. Obviously, bye week at the moment, bro. So what have you been up to? Yeah, bye week. Um, well, I copped a little knock in the weekend, so this this little bye week has come at a good time for mm. a lot of us, actually. So um, pretty gutted. I missed out on wrestle this morning. <laughs> I bet uh, you are, bro. I missed out on weights as well, so oh, that hurts. Tough life. Yeah, but um, nah, back into the week. Got a good session to get through tomorrow. So um, yeah, just rest, recover, and um, get excited for the the next, uh, I guess, few games. On that Raiders win, bro, a pretty special win. And I, as a fan, I ranked that right up there with that Sharks dub from earlier in the season as kind of the two that really stand out so far. Mm-hmm. How was it, bro, to go over to Canberra? Place is sold out, a pretty special occasion for the home side, and we steal the show. Must have felt like a pretty good win. Yeah. It, um, I, was like, bro, I was having this conversation the other day. It was up there with one of the more memorable wins of my career. Yeah. Purely because of what you just said, like the occasion. Yeah. Um, sold out the atmosphere it was all built up around them and what they were celebrating mm. and for us to have this sort of mentality that we be i guess implemented earlier in the week about getting excited about going over there and spoiling the party yeah um, was a term that we used throughout the week um there's nothing more satisfying than achieving what you set out to do and um bro like just the way we did it as well started off defending our line um absorbing so much pressure in such a big occasion and then to be able to turn it around and just unload everything we've absorbed on them and come home like we did was, um, yeah, it's up there, man. And I just think it gets me excited about what we can do for the rest of the year, you know. For sure. And there were three tries in particular I wanted to touch on. The first one, the Dallin one, blokes a freak. Was that like a set play? Is that something you guys practice or did you just see it was on? And how did he like rebalance himself and get that ball down? Because watching it live, I was like, nah, no way. Yeah. But as you see the replays, you're like, my God, he's pulled this off. Yeah, Dell, let's – Dow's a freak. Hmm. I don't know many other wingers that are finishing that kick that I put out there, um, but he's definitely a target for us, and it was planned. Um, me and Dow have been working on that kick for the last couple of years, and it's worked, and it yeah. hasn't worked. You know, I think if you even remember a couple of weeks ago against Broncos, we it was exactly the same play. Right. Out the back of some shape, a couple of lead runners, and Dow hold the paint, um, and I just got the kick a little bit too far, you yeah. know? Um this one, again, I thought I hit it too hard. I got some good kick pressure put on me. I had to get the ball down pretty quick. And when I hit it, I was like, ah, oh, I think that's too much. And then bro, when I looked up and I seen him up there, I was like <laughs> – and again, like 12 people on the field. It yeah. was just – it was a massive moment for, mm-hmm. for us as a side. So, yeah, it wasn't just a off the cuff. It was definitely part of what we do. And we practice it, yeah, a lot. So I'm glad we could yeah, execute it. That's unreal. The second one I wanted to touch on, bit of ball playing magic from yourself and probably as a playmaker, it's ones you dream of. I think it was that ball to Lukey Metcalf where he steamed over under the sticks. Like, yeah. That must have felt unreal. That was a beautiful seed. Yeah, it was um, It was, It was. was good Good footy to play off the back of some momentum mm. and it's something that we probably haven't uh, capitalised on enough this year. So uh, I'd, I'd really like the sequence leading up into that. You know, like we had a good a good play um, to the left. We come back with a good shot down the right, and that's what generated us that ruck. Uh, Chan's over the ad line, me over the yeah. ad line, and then you get your 5'8", punch in a hole. So um, that whole sequence was um, – it's a good clip for us to hold on to. Um, yeah, obviously, it looked, came up a little bit worse for wear after that. But yeah. I actually thought I hit Bailey, sir, and I thought that was Sizz that was punching that hole. So – um, the fact it was me little 5'8", it's yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty cool. Lukey Matt running yeah. the lines. And then the last one, which is the one that everyone's kind of been laughing at throughout this week, your intercept off the kickoff. Yeah. Like, your reaction to that, bro, was that just like pure shock? Like can't <laughs> yeah. believe, especially with everything that went on. You obviously went off, you come back on, score off the kickoff with an intercept. And then the little Michael Witt mm. playing up deluxe. Talk us through that. It was um, it was just tin ass, bro. <laughs> yeah. oh, it was just tinny ass. Yeah. And that's what my face was. I was just like, what the – a minute ago, I'm in there seeing if I can get back on the field, and here I am scoring a try. Like mm. it was just really weird, and that's what my reaction was. I was like, like really a little bit, of, like couldn't really believe that it had played out like that. So, um, the bit at the end was almost just like, man, we came here to spoil it, and we've done it, boys. And I just slammed it down. You know, yeah. I was like, it was just a sense of achievement, and um, yeah, it was, 
it was cool. It was a cool, like, I'll probably remember that for the rest of my career, you know, mm. like, because it's just so, it doesn't happen like that. It never happens like that, you know, so pretty, pretty little different way to jag one. For sure. And it's been spoken about so much, the success of the team so far this year, but obviously you've been around the club for a long time now. Can you talk to us about, like, this group of lads and what makes this team so special? Um, yeah, I... It's really cool to be a part of right now because I feel like um, we've got real clarity around what works and how we want to play, like yeah. our identity. Like we know what holds up and we've had uh, proof of that in big games, mm-hmm. you know, like our markers that we resort back to win or win or lose, we know if we get them right, we're more of a chance of winning. So yeah. I just love that everyone's bought in. Um, I love that the coaching staff have – um, you know, built a culture Webby, led by Webby, yeah. you know, where um, we all have a role to play. We're all valued. Um, and by everyone doing their job, it makes your job easier. You know, like I, I sort of like can't really cop the hype around, say, individuals like my performances yeah. or Chan's performances or these individuals that, you know, we're getting the headlines because oh, there's no way we're doing it without the contribution of mm. everyone. Yeah, you know what sure. I mean? So it's – um. It's a collective effort, right? It's a, it's a real collective effort. And um, when we're on, it's because we've got 17 boys out there doing their job yeah. within our system. Yeah. You spoke on a couple individuals there, and I want to dive into it a little more. Webby, seems like you two have a pretty special relationship, bro. What's it about like his presence that you think's helped you find the form you're in at the moment? Yeah, me and Webby do. Uh, the thing I get from Webby is just the belief. Yeah. Like he, he instills confidence. Um, and – it's not um, fabricated. Like it, it, it's through the reps we've done, mm. and uh, I guess the time on the field that we've had together, and getting something out of every drill we do. You know, there's no dead <laughs> or wasted time. Yeah, it's purposeful with everything we do, and that gives you confidence. You know, like my confidence this season has come from having that work under my belt. Mm. You know, I had a really good preseason, and when you able to get reps out there with your teammates, with a coach that fully backs you and believes in you, it can be pretty powerful. So, um, yeah, man, I, I, a lot of, yeah, I guess how I'm going, how I'm feeling, like mentally as well, is down to yeah, the coach. So, um, yeah, pretty cool relationship to have. A, a rookie head coach in the NRL, did you kind of have any preservations rocking up or first day of preseason, did you just know he was the right man for the gig? I, I knew he was the right man for the gig when he got appointed the yeah. job. I've had a relationship with him a few years ago uh, when he was at the club as an mm. assistant and did a lot of learning under him, you know. So I knew I knew he was the right guy. And I, he gave me a phone call last year when I was in a pretty bad spot with my footy over there in Brisbane. And um, I left that conversation knowing that he was – if there was going to be a turnaround, like from me individually, it was going to come under this guy. Yeah. You know, he just made me feel like that. And, um yeah, he he's. Oh, I wouldn't even. He hasn't surprised me. I just feel like he's delivered on what I what I just knew he could. Yeah, you know what I mean. And he's by no means, um, the you know got it all figured out. But, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely vulnerable and open to learning. You know, with the whole group at the same time. So it's pretty cool. There's been some massive new recruits to the club, and I feel like our recruitment in the off season was pretty slept on. Eh, like yeah. Warriors fans were excited, but perhaps over the ditch they were kind of just saying like they don't see much improvement in the team on and off the field. How much do you think guys like Chans, Walks, Mitch Barnett, those guys have added to this team? Yeah, that's probably hasn't been spoken about enough. Mm. You know, like they they all bring, um, they just all bring that that difference. You know, like there's levels. You know, and they. Yeah. You look at like Walks, um, Mitch, um, yeah, Nark in particular, like their yeah. work ethic, you know, like their their hunger just to compete, um, it rubs off. Mm. It rubs off on all of us. And um, any successful footy side has those players. You know, we've got the silk with Tohu and Adam and, um, you know, you throw Tamaiti and Luke Met and you know, yeah. some of these other boys, they add that. But you've got to have that dog. And I think, you know, like put those boys in the pack with Jazz, you know, and the yeah. likes of that, <laughs> yeah. Bunties and – um, it's 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 a really good mix, and I think yeah we've recruited really well, and um, we're seeing we're just seeing it hard, know? yeah for sure. One guy as well, Marata Niokore, you've formed a pretty good relationship with him on that edge as well, both on offense and defense. I yeah. think he's helped you take your game to a new level. What's it yeah. been like playing with him? Obviously, in the grand final last year, he's played rep footy, quality footballer. Yeah, well that dog, the dog I mentioned, he's yeah he can hit a eh? center. Yeah, he's like um. <laughs> 
just that that mongrel, you yeah. know, like he's so powerful, so aggressive, and that makes me feel a whole heap more protected. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, Something like time. that inside you. Yeah. So um, he's been really good for me, um, really good for us. Um, and, yeah, just that presence he brings, you know. He's played in some big games, so he knows what it's about. Um, yeah, a game just rubs off, mm. you know. That's unreal. And you mentioned Tamare and Luki, Matt. You've, you've teamed up with a few boys in the halves this year, oh, unfortunately, man. due to injury. But yeah. what's it been like playing with those two in particular? Obviously, you have a relationship with Luki from your Sharks days, and, and he's going great guns now. But Tamare at the start of the season, you guys look like you were clicking unreal as well. Was it kind of instant straight away? Did you know Tamare before this? Yeah, yeah. So me, T, um, we played Kiwis together. Yeah. Um, me and Luki worked together. Uh, me and Ronnie had been together the last sort of 12 yeah. months. Like, And the the cool thing with where our halves are at is, yeah, you've seen me work with them, but I'm more than confident that, say, if something was to happen to me, mm-hmm. touch wood, that Lukey and Tamaiti would work really well together. Yeah. Ronnie and Lukey would work, you know, like because we know what works for us. You know, like uh, our, our game plan um, is a lot bigger than one individual, you know, so I'm more than confident that any of us can gel together and do what we need to do mm-hmm. to execute how we want to play, you know, and I've had the opportunity to do that with, you know, them both, all three of them at some yeah. point. But if it was my time to roll out and someone else, like, they would they would get it done too. So um, depth is important and it's going to be important heading into the back end. Yeah, you mentioned depth there. And while it sucks that we've had so many injuries, is it exciting as a team to know that on paper we haven't put out our best 17 really yet in ages back into the season? Hopefully we'll have all these bodies back. It must fill you with confidence for kind of that run home second half of the season. Yeah, it, it does, bro. Like, you get... You get your troops back. It can only be beneficial, yeah. you know. So, um, yeah, like we're not really looking, and we never really have, bro. And maybe that's what's been working for us is mm. we've never looked at who we didn't have. We've always looked at what we do have, yeah. you know what I mean? And I think likes of Tommy, Ali, um, Dimitri, when they've had the opportunities, um, you know, Bailey's been unreal for yeah. us, Josh, he, like yeah. anyone that steps in has just been on, mm. you know, and like that's what we celebrate, you know, like. But having boys back that have been there, done that for long periods of times, um, yeah, it, it strengthens you uh, tenfold. So, yeah, we need we need everyone back as you know as soon as we can, and um, hopefully that holds up at the back end. Hard, yeah, yeah. You really notice that next man up mentality in the team at the moment, which is unreal. And a great example of it was the young fella on debut on the weekend, Ali. Obviously, mm. Rocco's out with injury. And he comes and just from the outside looking in, he looks like he's got that perfect balance of kind of confidence but humbleness. Yeah. He backs himself on both sides of the football. How cool was it to see him make his debut up against the 300 man and hold his own? He stood out too. That took that catch he took yeah. off that kick, yeah. outstanding stuff. Like as a vet, must be cool to see these young boys coming through. As a vet, jeez, bro. Oh, you are, bro. <laughs> you're a vet. Weird. You're a vet. <laughs> I'm the oldest you may be playing like a bro. young fella, but you're a vet. a vet. Didn't the boys call you Koro last yeah, year? Yeah, they call me all sorts, bro. <laughs> uh, like with Ali, um, we'd seen glimpses of what he's capable of during the preseason and seeing what he's done down at Cup. Mm. It's, there was only a matter of time. Um, but I just think he showed everyone that he belongs. And there's no question mark over him anymore. You know, like he's he's going to continue to improve and he's driven and determined to be better and he's just got that 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 silk about him but that work ethic about him. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to see where, you know, he can get to in his career. It's going to be really cool to see that. And, um, yeah, he was he was amazing, bro. As good a debut as I can remember. Mm. Um, nothing flashy, the tries and all that, but just – him defending outside me, I got caught. I got sat on leads a couple of times where I just didn't get off. Yeah, he held his own. He held his nerve, and he just solved solved the problem. Him and Dow solved the problem yeah. together. And like Raiders are running pretty hot at the yeah. moment. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, there's not really much bigger test to do that down in Canberra on the occasion. So sure. he he should take a lot of confidence from that. I think another big. Like impact on our performances this year is obviously being back at home, back at Mount Smart. You've spoken about it a fair bit in the yep. past, so we won't dive into it too much. But just the fact you guys have a permanent base, you're back in front of the fan base. Like, how much of a boost does that give the boys? Yeah, it's. I, I'm keen to speak about it as much as we can. Bro. There we go. You know what I mean? Like, it's when you haven't had it, it sucked. Yeah, I think su- like, I, I think it sucked for all of New Zealand. Like, even yeah, just being the, say the other side of 100%. it, players, it sucked, but. As fans and members, it sucked for them too. Mm. So it's like we just get to come together and just celebrate and really value and appreciate the time that we do have here. And you've seen that in the turnouts. Yeah. Like our crowds have been ridiculous, you know, and playing in front of that, there's actually, there's nowhere 
I would rather play in the world mm. than at a packed Mount Smart. Yeah. You know, so um, it goes both ways, you know, and we, as players, we value being at home. We appreciate, we'd never take it for granted mm-hmm. any opportunity we get to be back here. Um, and then when we see the fans show up like they do, the noise they make, um, oh, it's hard to, man. It's yeah, hard I was going to say, what's it like? like? Because as a fan, obviously, like, we get a buzz when you boys run out and the, the place yeah. erupts. But what's it like as the, a player? Like, do you hear all the noise? Does it take you to another level? Oh, it just makes me smile. It gives me the goosebumps, yeah. you know, like – you call me the vet. I don't know how many like how many years I've run out here, mm. and I still just get that feeling of like there's there's no better feeling. You know what I mean? Like this is off a of Ted, off a of Ted, bro. And I just can't stress enough. Yeah, what that's done for us. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, just even having our family in the stands to watch. Mm. You know, like mum and dad, they came to every game here. You know, when I was here previously. Yeah, and then you go away and you don't have that. Mm. How you get to come back and just really soak all that sort of stuff up as well, that side of things. It's nice, man. Yeah, because you're, you're a big family man as well. So does that help take your game to another level too, just knowing that your wife or Miller, they're, yeah. they're in the stands as well? Because it's crazy to think this time last year, you guys were over in Brizzy probably doing it tough. I think people are pretty quick to forget. It seems like way long ago yeah. compared to just last year. So how, how does that impact your game and just life in general, I guess? If you're happy, you play good footy. Yeah. You're exactly right, bro. You summed it up perfectly. Even been able to run around on the field with MJ after the game. Yeah. You know, come into the shed. She's playing with all the kids, all of our, all the boys' families and kids come into our sheds after they're running around on the mats. That's awesome. It's, yeah. it's that sort of stuff that, um, when you see the reward of your hard work, that, that's what it looks like to me, mm. you know? So, um, yeah, we don't need to look back, but yeah, when you just, when you haven't had it and now you have it, it's just means so much more. Yeah. Sure. And, what, bye week this week, but we're almost halfway through the season now. Do you guys kind of reassess with where you're at and set goals for the back end, or is it just about trucking on and trying to keep that momentum going? Yeah, it's important to hold on to momentum. Um, but there's no doubt where we will have some sort of little reset and, um, yeah, when you have a bit of time off, it's important to come back in and really narrow your focus, you know, mm. and um, get on the same page with what we're trying to achieve. So, um yeah, look, we'll look to do that maybe early next week. But um, right now, I think it's important we nail the sessions that we've got. You know, so we've got uh, a couple of sessions to get through, um, and then we get a couple of days off, and then we come in and we try to hit the ground running. You know, yeah, yeah, awesome. And I won't stitch you up with questions about your future because I know there's a bit going on, and and no doubt that'll be sorted in due time. But mm-hmm. is it exciting for you to see guys like RTS? Uh, CHT signed to come back next year. And is that just a testament to how well the lads are going at the moment? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, it's exciting, really exciting for the club's future to have those Mm. two come back. Um, And for them to want to come back, for them to see what we're building, you know, to be like, yeah, I want to be a part of that. Yeah. It's just as as cool, you know, just as important. So um, it's it's, for anyone that we expect to attract – um, we've got to be playing a good brand and be building a good culture. Mm. And the first sign of it is seeing those two boys sign back on. So, yeah, really exciting, really exciting for the club. On social media, you were pretty excited about Rog yeah. in particular, bro. Did you know that that was coming? Had you heard something was in the oh. works? Or what was your reaction nah, when you I don't saw want to get the deal was trouble, done? But maybe, <laughs> no. you know, a little something, something. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But would expect it, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's just a, a great move. A great yeah. move from the club, I reckon. You know, I was gutted when he left, but understood why, um, what dreams he had. So, yeah, um, excited to see him come back in, you know. Sure. Let's get into some fan questions, bro, because I know you got team meeting coming up, and yeah. I don't want to be public enemy number one. Everyone know, will be spraying me. Longer, over eh? the, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Missed the meeting. You could FaceTime in. Yeah. But first one comes through from Courtney, and he asked for your dream starting six NRL touch. And you'd have to be in there, obviously, because, oh, mate, fuck. back in the Oriwa days, that, that highlights video, you were snapping some ankles, but Dream five six. others. Five others. Okay, this is one that slipped on, is Tamati Martin. Oh. He's so... Yeah. Nice? Yeah, nice with it. He's his first pick. Um, like it. Yeah, and he'll be like, bro, I'm not... But he is gun. Yeah. You can just tell. Yeah, he's gun. Um, touch players um, of all time. Yeah, or just NRL lads, NRL Current lads. NRL players. Anyway, okay, Benji. Anyone. Yeah, of course. Benji. Yeah. Um, Scott Prince. Oh. Yeah, throw him in there. That's, hey, the, that's the winning combo, wasn't it, yeah, from the Tigers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They, 
Jailed somewhere. Didn't yeah, they? yeah, so, hard, hard. Uh, we'll go Ponga. Yeah. Um, maybe like a man, like just get him on the sting for speed, like a fox or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah, yeah. He'll he'll burn people yeah. for sure. That's a pretty deadly team, but yeah, you gotta go. say, there we go. Next one's from Joe Johnson, who I believe you might know brother, quite Joe? well. You, might you know him quite it? well. There we go. And oh, he yeah. says, golf courses in New Zealand you want to play that you haven't played yet. Oh, yeah. Well, we were down in Napier the other week, and that mm. Cape Kidnappers looked like a track. So yeah. I'm keen to get on there. If anyone's watching from Cape Kidnappers, oh, get the reach out. out. Surely, <laughs> surely. That'll happen. We'll um, see them there we soon. Played, man, I've been lucky. I've played some. But Queenstown, I'd love to head to Queenstown and play yeah. um, like the Hills. Jack's um, Point. Yeah, I've, is... played, I've been lucky enough. I've played Jack's Ooh, Point. That's nice. a track. How'd you go? Um, poor. <laughs> it's never about the performance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's but just you can the get the worst shot of the world, and you yeah. just look around and you go, meh, look at where we are, lads, yeah. you know? Um, same with Seattle, bro. We played up there, and I, I played horrible the first time, <laughs> and I was just like, it does not, it doesn't matter. Yeah, look where I am. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like, just be grateful. Yeah, eh? yeah, this is unreal. So, um, yeah, there's there's plenty I want to play. And New Zealand mm. has got has been blessed with yeah heap. So yeah, yeah, those are the two Cape kidnappers to throw out, and then yeah, get us down Queenstown Hills, that sort of thing. And just on golf because we we're talking about it off air, but Joshy Curran was on here a couple of weeks back, giving it the big one, saying he goes the best in the team. I obviously thought you'd be pretty sharp. Is there anyone else that goes good off the sticks? And is Curran, in fact, usually the, best the guys the that say they're the best, uh, you know, yeah, never the yeah. best, right? So yeah. I'll just leave that at that. Um, <laughs> Wado's by far the best. Wade Egan can hit a ball. Yeah, I've actually encouraged him. He should probably play rugby league as the hobby and take up golf and get on the Ooh. tour. He is, he is pure, bro. He hits a good, yeah, and D walks too. They're, they're the two guns. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about walks. That caught me yeah. off guard a little, late eh? yeah, Just because that those intensity, big hits, bro. They just yeah. rotate, you know. Just, Bit of power in there. Oh, lad. Yeah, glutes of doom. <laughs> glutes <man>. of doom. <laughs> Gotta love that. Jane asked, "Who's the funniest in the team?" Um, funniest in the team. We've got a few, bro. Like, like just jokers, bro. Like Adam, yeah. bro, big Denny. He's, Everyone mentions him, mate. He's just he's just a big joke. Like he, yeah. he's never serious and he's he's pretty funny. Um walks is pretty yeah, like it's like a different they're not trying to be funny, yeah, but they're just funny. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? That sort of thing. So is um, it Aussie humor? Yeah, or? Aussie humor, like even like someone like Mars. Yeah. Just so blunt, so straight up that you, it's funny. Yeah. yeah. You know? Like if you don't laugh, it could get a bit awkward, so yeah. you just laugh it out. But yeah. um <laughs> like, yeah, they're they're some ones that come to mind. You love your tunes, bro. Been in the team room a couple of times and you're on the Orcs, you or Mars. Next question, favourite go-to before and after game songs? Oh, man. I That's funny, bro. I've actually um, sort of shifted away. Like, I don't listen to music, hey? Oh. Yeah. Buzzy. What, pre-game? Yeah. No, I don't, you won't see me with headphones yeah, on off right. the bus or anything like that. Uh, unless lads doing that these days. I feel like it went through like a thing. Everyone had like the Beats by yeah, Dre, the massive sort of the headphones. Cool thing to look now at. not so well, much. One of the boys usually like will just carry a speaker. Yeah. And we've um, actually been playing music just out loud in the sheds before the game. I I sort of went away from it because I actually like to take in the noise now. Yeah. It's like Even if it's silence, I'm like, man, there's something, something special that yeah. happened, you know? I don't like to sort of go away from it. So Right there. Yeah, I haven't really. Um, but bro, like. Of country's grown on me, eh? Oh, yeah, that's showing your age, maybe, eh? Because I've just got into bro, country Morgan as Wallen, well. And Morgan Wallen, bro. Ooh. Yeah, Luke Combs. Yeah. I actually say just to G, Luke, I call him Luke Wallen and Morgan Combs, you know, oh, like just, the boys. To, just to get the purest guy. Are there yeah, a few? You know what I mean? Oh, a few country away, purists. Go, oh, yeah, bro. Wait, chuck on some, um, yeah, ch- chuck on some Luke Wallen and one of the guys. Oh, it's Morgan, you know, straight oh. away. It's more like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's, <laughs> an, that's an easy one, yeah. eh? Go fishing with yeah, the lads. Are so, there a few country boys? Um, like, what yeah, gets just, played post up? Nah, a little bit of everything. Yeah. Literally, I can't, I, not one song is coming to mind, not yeah, one right. genre is coming to mind. It's literally whatever. Like anything flies. Yeah, I know um, if you get D Walks on it, he's like quite heavy techno. Ooh. Yeah, like what do they call it? Gap, like the Gabber or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's heavy. Jeepers. <laughs> yeah. Again, showing He's off deep. the glutes, yeah, eh? Yeah, this dungeon, bro. Yeah, the hips. Yeah. Unreal. Next one, most underrated player currently in the Warriors squad, in your opinion. And I think I asked you this a couple of years back on my pod, and you said to look out for guys like Rocco and Villy. Mm, and you came you, you came true, bro. You're yeah. a pretty good talent scout. Is there yeah, anyone yeah. at the moment you think's like underrated or the next up and comer? I think, I think. A lot of our squads underrated. Yeah, I, I really do. Yeah, um, underrated and up and coming are probably two different categories. Mm. Um, like I think 
I think Marcelo Montoya is very underrated. Hard. I think um, – like Dallin and that, they deserve they, – they're getting the praise, and they rightly so, yeah. you know what I mean? But Mar- you throw Mars in that conversation, the way he carries the ball, the leadership, mm-hmm. um, the confidence he gives his teammates, I, I think Mars is really underrated. Um, Up-and-comer, um, Dimitri. Yeah. You saw a little glimpse of him. He's going to be special, and yeah. there's another kid coming through, Lekker. Yeah. We've got a couple of really good um, – Zion, Lekker. Yeah. You'll see them a, a lot over the next sort of handful of years, I reckon. Future's bright. Mm. You love that. Next one. If you could swap yourself with another professional athlete at the moment, anyone in the world, who would it be? We're talking like your LeBrons, your Rory McIlroy. Give me Messi, bro. Oh, I'll take that deal. He's just worked oh wow. Way. Give me shares in Apple. Give me all of wow. it. Wow. Yeah, he is. He's elite, bro. You see the ticket prices? They jump from like 25 bucks to 420 a to, game. To have that sort of scope and be able to work a deal like he's just done is, I'll take that. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right there. And then the last one, and it's from Jacko. Of course, he had to have his say. So he's fired one in. You've lived in both. Pros and cons, Australia versus New Zealand summer. What are you taking? Oh, I, I think when we can, when New Zealand can get a summer right, okay, like we're not comparing <laughs> it's this It's hard last to summer. do, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but tradition, like we have cracker summers, bro. Yeah. Like they're really good. Nothing beats a Kiwi summer, in my yeah. eye. Yeah. But if you're up for the old developed, you know, like volume of mass people with, you know, just the scale of it to be big. Then yeah. You can't beat Aussie. Yeah. Aussie have done it well, man. Like they, they're on. Even like they're like little rock pools and like what they got going on there. Are those RSLs and yeah, that? RSL. Man. Like when when were they cool? Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Aussie have made them cool. Yeah. Fair. So like I, I let, let's not be silly burgers here. Honestly, Aussie have got us covered. Yeah. But I love a Kiwi summer. Yeah, bro. Jeez, that's a diplomatic answer. There I like go, that. Foot, foot in both camps. Yeah. He's a veteran. Well, appreciate your time, bro. You got team meetings, so we'll let you fly. But always great to have a yarn. Obviously, playing some Unreal Code. So keep that up and uh, all the best for the next couple of weeks. Let's go beat the Dragons. Thanks, up the Waz. Up the Waz, baby.